I let Narciso lead the way, happy that she knew the layouts of the town. Throughout the whole secretive walk, we did not speak a word to each other. The air around us became thick enough to slice with a knife. After about two seconds into it, I tried to break the ice. So, we have been traveling for a while, haven't we? She did not respond. That night was especially breathtaking. The moon was in close proximity to the earth resembling a polished pearl. Narcissa used the light radiating from the celestial body and led me further away from the town and into the rough thickets of the woods. The forest was completely bereft of nuz. No owls screeched in the night. If there were crickets, they were deathly silent. Narcissa gently tugged my arm deeper in the neck of the woods until we stopped at a cave. At the entrance, Narcissa withdrew a torch and lit it. She then beckoned me inside. I was not thrilled to be entering into a dreary, claustrophobic area, but those cultists could still be on our track. Soaking in my fears, I entered the cold and dreary cave. A pungent, repulsive smell, that of decay matter, drifted from the entrance. The odor of ages long past was not lost on me. I stared at Narcissa, wondering how she was holding up, but she was unbothered. Let's go. We don't have much time to waste. She flicked her finger through her bangs before leading me further into the maw of the cave. It was silent aside from our footsteps and the soft dripping of moisture in the distance. Water sparkled on the stalactites like beads of diamonds and trickled into an underground pool. I confused the stalagmites for razor, jagged teeth from the erosion over the years. Behind us, the entrance disappeared into the void as shadows encased us. The wind whistled into the cave adding on to the ambience. If I was being accurate in my description, I could have sworn I heard the cavern breathe, and the cavernous walls appeared to twist and contract like a living creature. My paranoia became flared. I wanted nothing more than to leave, but the exit was nowhere to be seen. Besides, if I left on my own volition, I would have become stranded and made to wander in the dark until the end of time. My breathing hazed and goosebumps flared on the surface of my skin. Fluid fell on my shoulders from the stalactites making me wriggle in displeasure. Eventually, Narcissa led me to an opening. What is this place? Narcissa didn't reply, merely goading me in with her finger. Seeing no reason to doubt her, I entered the area. The secret location was decked in heavy sheets of cobwebs which dangled down from the ceiling. It was also inexplicably damp and disgusting, the putrid scent of decay even more prominent. My eyes settled on discarded skeletons, with their wrists restrained and chains protruding from the walls. They were likely down here for centuries judging from their aged worn features. Whatever they had witnessed, they died in total fright. Their lower jaws were stretched as far as humanly possible to where they became unhinged. Over the years, the only thing keeping them suspended was the webbing. The more I soaked in my surroundings, I became aware of the purpose the location served. There was a huge slab situated in front of a bottomless pit at the base of the cave. Arms made from wedges of stone stretched from the structure. Dried blood and viscera were stained on the flat surface of the instrument. I desperately looked at Narcissa with the hopes she was as confused as I was. However, instead of a detection of fear, Narcissus' facial expressions shifted to one that was apathetic to the whole thing. I watched her stride over and 
light a crucible underneath the stone slab. The gaseous, nauseating fumes wafted in the air smelling like rotten flesh and scorched ashes. Her once beautiful, hypnotizing eyes transitioned to a pale blue as if her energy was sucked from her body. Hundreds of years ago, the great old one I hoard first manifested in the town of Vicksburg. This cave is the exact place that, according to folk tales, a woman who came from an impoverished upbringing made a deal to the gods for eternal beauty and youth. Narcissa, what are you suggesting? I felt a wet, slick object grasp my shoulders. The cultists' voices gurgled and wheezed. Before I could try to fight back, two of the worshippers lifted me off the ground and directed me to the stone slab. I kicked and thrashed, I swung my arms around. Nothing happened. They tossed me on the hard surface with such force I felt my spine buckle. My wrists were tightly tied to the arms of the instrument, the rope seeding into the tender flesh. Narcissa stared at me for a few seconds. She was no longer the woman I thought I knew for the duration of my stay in Vicksburg. She strolled over, kneeling and staring at the primitive skeletons. And once again, my god will have a sacrifice. Sacrifice? The word bounced around in my head. Everything was happening so fast. You know an awful lot about that myth. She laughed. Well, yes, after all, how old do you think I am? I strained against the tight binds to no avail. The town and its conditions. It was always you. Hundreds of years ago, the town of Vicksburg was once a prosperous area. It was a massive trading town where corn, pumpkins, fabric, you name it, and it was traded and sold. I was born to a poor family, but I was considered the fairest of the town. Of those a nobleman took a liking. After meeting him on several nights, he popped the question to me, and I said yes. Then why did you betray your own family? What do you think is the one fear that all humans share? Death. Humans have had several accomplishments when they crawled out from the festering, primordial cesspool. And yet, despite all those achievements, the one thing that they failed to conquer was death. She casually pried the skull off a skeleton and flicked her fingers through the jawbones. I knew that one day I would die, but I couldn't live with that harsh truth. Not someone who is as gorgeous as me. Narcissa tossed the skull aside and spoke to the cultists. You think that you saved me earlier? Don't you realize that the people of Vicksburg follow my commands? So, then that means Walter. That should be obvious. I thought you of all people would be more intuitive. He was but a sacrifice, one I lured. That explains why I was told to come here. So the dating game? A ruse, sweetheart. How else was I supposed to meet up with you? The cultist packed away from me and collapsed on their knees in a praying stance. My fear of death became so great, I called on the god of the labyrinth to grant me eternity, which he did. However, I had neglected the fact that Ihort himself had his own terms. He asked me to foster his brood. Not thinking much about it, I accepted. They are squirming around within me as we speak in a larval state. But once I realized his brood would eat their way out of my body, it was then that the truth became clear. He merely extended my lifespan, but in order to avoid missing his quota, I had to resort to drastic measures. Your husband and kids. How could you? Necessary sacrifices. After them, I did the same process to the rest of the town. Some would go missing for weeks locked away in my lair with their bodies being dissolved and eaten from the inside out. Curiously, the broodling acquired memories of their hosts, sometimes effortlessly mimicking their voices. I saw that happen with a young 32-year-old I lord. The broodling demonstrated mannerisms he himself had. Perhaps when a host perishes, they are never truly gone but exist as bodiless spirits attached to the broodling. 
It made a considerable amount of sense despite the bizarre nature, the hotel worker, and the woman I had met at the dating game. Their essences were still present within these anomalies, and they were crying for release. Narcissa cleared her throat and walked over to caress my cheek. Eventually, in my haste to stay alive, I accidentally destroyed the town. I tried any solution I could think of like introducing interbreeding among the broodling, but after a few centuries, that was not enough. What are you getting out of helping an old one? You know the risks these unspeakable monstrosities have for the Earth. The god of the labyrinth shall once again be free to rule this world. I intend on becoming a lore royalty once the ancient crypts are opened. I already have served Ihort faithfully as his high priestess for centuries. I am not some lowly, weak, insignificant human. I have ascended to godhood, and I believe I deserve my dues. Wouldn't you? After I comforted you about the abuse you suffered. You believe that story? Gods, you're as pathetic as all those other humans who I tricked into loving me. You'll never get away with this. I will escape and tell Jacques all about what I learned. This town will be demolished faster than you could even blink. Narcissus' grin stretched around her ears. Need I remind you that the broodling follows my commands because of the spawn that is swimming in my stomach? Through iHort, I have eyes all over the scope of this world. Let's just say he was paid a very special visit. I wanted to say more. Perhaps call Narcissa every name under the sun, but I froze when a series of tremors shook the cave to its very core. Narcissa maniacally snickered at me, relishing in how utterly defenseless I was. Now, time for you to make the choice so many before you have. My fear bubbled from the deepest regions of my stomach, but there was no one present who could help me. The ceiling quaked as a series of cracks formed. Stalactites of varying sizes crumbled and fell around me. It was as if legions of freight trains collided all at once in a massive collusion of biblical proportions. <laughs>